Are we about to witness the largest alt season in history? Welcome to the channel, everyone. My name is Nick. For those that are new to the channel, hopefully by the end of this video, you do become a subscriber. Guys, we are so close to 100,000 subscribers. I'm going to have to do a live stream. I'm going to have to do a live stream once we hit 100K. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, I highly suggest you do. But regardless, I just want to quickly say thank you to everyone out there that has been a long-term subscriber or even a new subscriber. I appreciate every single one of you so much. Without any of you, this channel would basically be nothing. But with that in mind, let's dive on in and let's talk about a few things because guys, a lot has happened in just the last seven days alone. I mean, if we're just looking at my screen right now, Bitcoin up 10.35% in the last seven days, Ethereum up almost 7.5% as well. Some old coins like Solana up almost 20%, just broke 20% at the time that I'm uh, reading this. XRP, almost 12%. Dogecoin, 20% almost. I mean, guys, the last seven days for old coins have been very, very interesting. It's been very good as well. A lot of them bouncing off of the lows. Unless you're looking at like Mantra, which has been like up only in the last like month. I mean, this thing has been crazy, but I strongly encourage everyone to join the free discord. There's going to be a link at the top of the description below. This is one of the most valuable and informative discords out there, and it's completely free. There's a free side that has a ton of free crypto gems, free market strategies, guides, market trends, free charts. And there's also going to be new cheat sheets dropped in this Discord. And already we have a ton of testimonials from members of the Discord that have been absolutely loving it. So what are you waiting for? Go and click the link at the top of the description below and join the free Discord. For the most part, the market has been heating up. And uh, this is Bitcoin in the last seven days, Ethereum in the last seven days, XRP in the last seven days. Now, I noticed that HBAR, Casper, and QNT all are pretty flat. I mean, in the last seven days, HBAR up 2%, uh, Casper up 2%, QNT up about like almost 3%. In the last one month, they're still all pretty much down, except for Casper. Casper's actually up almost 10%, um, and QNT is just breaking even a little bit. But again, the one thing that I want to say right now is we're not exactly in alt season. Don't be, you know, misinformed when you go over here and you look at, you know, the top gainers and the losers and you're looking at this and you're like, wow, a lot of these old coins are up like 20 plus percent. And, you know, if I just grabbed like any random one of these, right. And you know, what a great uh, choice. You know, if we actually look at these charts, they're just like moving off of the lows. Even if we look at, uh, you know, Tau for an example, which is one of the most prominent AI coins in the space. I mean, they're still just bouncing off of the significant low. So that's why we're starting to see some pretty big moves in the altcoin market. But realistically speaking, they're not making new all-time highs. They're not, you know, pushing high or anything like that. But the question is, when is that going to happen? And are we about to witness that? Well, we're going to be talking about that. But I want to give out a big warning to anyone out there in crypto right now, especially if you are, you know, getting a little bit bullish, right? If we look at the Crypto Fear and Greed Index on CMC, we could see that this thing is pushing into greed levels. Now, I typically get a little bit cautious once we start to kind of see this. Also, if you go over onto like X or even YouTube, everyone's getting very bullish because again, Bitcoin's back to almost 68K. It did, bro uh, it did break over 68K today. I think it was sitting at about like 68.4K or something like that. You know, people are calling for new all-time highs. I saw a lot of uh, 250,000 to $500,000 calls for Bitcoin and even a million dollars you know, like this is just getting a little bit ridiculous. But, you know, if we go back, you know, just like a month ago, not even, right? We go back to the fifth, the world was ending. Crypto was dead, right? And it's so funny how that works. Now, you might be questioning, well, Nick, what's the big warning? Like, what are we supposed to be, you know, worried about? Because although, yeah, as we do look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin has been doing very good. You know, most of the market has been doing very good. And also, are old coins about to have a massive run up in this market? Like, are we about to see XRP, HBAR, Casper, QNT, all of these old coins go crazy parabolic? In my opinion, yes, we will. But first, I do think that considering the fact that the crypto fear and greed index is back into greed, and even over here in terms of the Bitcoin fear and greed index, this is back into greed at 70, which is pretty rough. I mean, 
Just last week, we were at 52. We're already at 70. Yesterday, we're at 74. So I am getting a little bit cautious. Now, is this a big week? Are we about to see one of the biggest altcoin catalysts announced this week? We have over here, welcome to Spot ETH ETF launch week. Trading set to begin on Tuesday. And here we could actually see the full breakdown of it. We have the names of all the uh, ETFs. Um, I don't see BlackRock on here, which is uh, very interesting. Um, but regardless, we could see all of the ETFs, all of the tickers around this, the starting fee, the post waiver fee, waiver length and all that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, I mean, this is going to put the Ethereum narrative into uh, overdrive. I mean, this is going to be pretty crazy. Now, if you do remember, the ETH ETFs were set to go live around July 4th. That was the original view. Then it was like, you know, a week out. It changed. And now apparently this is going to be the launch week for these ETH ETFs. And if we go over here, we have Ethereum ETF breakdown. The Ethereum ETF is launching this week. Analysts predict the ETF demand could push ETH to 5K, 10K, or even 20K by the end of the next year. Let's break down these price targets and the reality. We'll also cover how the Bitcoin ETF impact to Bitcoin and what to expect for ETH. And here we have the Ethereum ETF launch is imminent, but many misunderstand the timeline. The US approved the ETF in May, but it required a second approval S1 filing before trading could start. And recently, all eight issuers filed their S1s. The eight issuers include BlackRock, Fidelity, Bitwise, um, ARK Invest, Vanek, Investo, Franklin Templeton, and Grayscale. Most will likely offer low fees around 25%. Um, 0.25%. These ETFs will be available on major US brokerages like Fidelity and Robinhood. Let's have a look at some pros and cons of the Ethereum ETF versus buying real Ethereum. Pros and cons, you know, this is the pros. No complex self-custody issues. Funds are issued and regulated one-to-one -one value back in with real ETH. Tax advantages with accounts like Roth IRAs or even 401ks. Cons, no real custody, limiting financial freedom, no staking income, 4.4% annually, no DeFi income, missing out on lending and liquidity provision opportunities. The total opportunity costs, including staking and DeFi, can be around 10% annually. Uh, let's examine how these can impact ETH's price. Galaxy's research suggests that an average demand ratio for ETH versus Bitcoin of around 31%. Given the 15 billion inflow into Bitcoin ETFs, we could estimate that an annualized inflow of approximately 11.8 billion into ETH ETFs. This doesn't mean ETH's price will rise immediately upon ETF launch. Like Bitcoin, Ethereum might see initial dips due to outflows from Grayscale's Ethereum Trust, which holds about 9 billion in assets. Now, I actually like the fact that they are mentioning that because that is something that we will go over in this video. Another factor is the absence of staking income in these ETFs. While ETFs provide regulated um, exposure, they don't offer the 4.4 annualized staking rewards uh, that direct ETH investments do. This might deter some institutions focused on staking income. In summary, significant inflows are expected into Ethereum ETFs, but initial uh, volatility may occur due to convergence and the lack of staking rewards. Monitoring these developments will be crucial for anticipating ETH's price movements. And uh, of course, you know, as we really kind of look at this, right, one thing that I do focus on is a lot of these price predictions around Ethereum, you know, the 10, the 15, the 20,000, the, you know, ridiculous calls around this, like this is just only, you know, promoting the phase two of the cycle a little bit more in terms of alt season, which I told you guys about, because it will start with Bitcoin, then it will flow into Ethereum, then it will flow into XRP and all these other altcoins. coins. That's what alt season basically is all about, right? It starts with Bitcoin, then it flows into ETH, and then it flows into all other altcoins. Now, the big thing to focus on here is, you know, what is going to happen once we do see ETH ETFs? What's going to happen once we see Bitcoin break its all-time high? Well, that's when the retail flood comes. And I put out over on X that the retail flood is brewing. And from what I see on my timeline, most are not ready for it. It might sound like hopium right now, but the majority of the altcoins in this space would be 10x from these levels. Alt season has yet to hit this market and Bitcoin dominance weakens day by day. You are either ready or you will miss out. Now, I also put out another post regarding Bitcoin, right? Because, you know, as we really look at uh, the Bitcoin ETF, it did cause Bitcoin to sell off. Like here we have Bitcoin during that time, right? So it got approved on the 10th. We were already pumping into this. In fact, we actually sold off on Bitcoin initially. It was down about 10.88%. Nothing too crazy, right? Not like over here where we are... Uh, you know, down 25.6% or even 27.5% going off of the high back here. And this is going off of the local high. 
you know, 25.6%. Um, but, you know, we, you know, continue to drop about roughly 21.71% in total on Bitcoin. And this was even after the approval. This is off of the approval high. But then from there, we continued even higher and, you know, went to almost $74,000. Now, as we do look at Bitcoin, you know, if we are looking at Bitcoin right now, I put out a post over on X on what I'm expecting, right? This is what I'm expecting on Bitcoin. It's not a guarantee. It's not something that I would be selling old coins to try buying lower or anything like that. But I said, this is what I'm expecting on Bitcoin. We just filled a bearish uh, fair value gap on the upside. And this is where we would be uh, seeing a strong rejection from. Bullish sentiment is heating up again while we are at significant resistance levels. The bullish FVG on the lows is around 60 to 63K. And from there, I'm expecting us to run to $74,000 plus. Now, I do have that chart open right here. Now, let's actually address this. So number one, fear and greed index is at significant highs in the greed area. Everyone's getting extremely bullish over the ETH ETFs. Everyone's expecting old coins to go absolutely parabolic. You know, we have Bitcoin pumping. Everyone's extre extremely happy. They're extremely excited. They're calling for all time highs. They're calling for this, that, whatever. And this is where I really, you know, kind of get a little bit cautious because, you know, if we actually look at where Bitcoin is, you know, this is in a major supply zone. It's also, by the way, a fair value gap that's uh, bearish on the upside, because if we look at this, right, we have this candle, um, candle wick here on the, let me zoom in on the three day candle before we start to sell off in uh, June. Then we have a, a slight bounce, right? Kind of like a dead cat bounce here. Um, and this was a candle wick to about roughly 67,286 in order for Bitcoin to invalidate us filling this gap down here between almost 60,000 to 63 K, we would need to have a three day candle body close over $69,069. All right. So what we want to actually see is a candle body close over this level. Until we see that, we just filled this bearish gap. And now we would essentially be expecting us to, you know, sell off back to like 65.8K, have a little bit of a bounce back to like 67.3K or so, and then continue to fill that gap. Now, this is not bearish. This would not be a, a bad thing. In fact, we would basically be sweeping liquidity. We would be targeting a fair value gap. That's actually a bullish fair value gap, grabbing liquidity just to continue even higher. And also I have this circle down here because this was also a fair value gap that we did fill on the three day chart. And the best part about this, right, is that if we are going to maintain this area here as a low, this fair value gap as a low, then we would still be holding a higher low structure. Then what we need to target is a higher high, putting in a bullish structure on Bitcoin. Now, after we do run these lows, and if we do run these lows, like I said, I am expecting much higher. I'm expecting us to grab liquidity from the recent May and even June highs around 71,900 or so. And then from there, we really kind of target the March high, taking out liquidity in this range up here between about roughly 72K to almost $74,000. And from there, the next big target would be $80,000 plus. This is a short term, you know, warning to definitely have some stable coins on the sidelines just in case we get those uh, lows ran. That way we could buy in altcoins that are significantly oversold. Now, talking more so about altcoins and alt season, if we actually look over here on Bitcoin dominance on the three week, we are significantly weakening on Bitcoin dominance. Just check out the MACD down there. The momentum is basically dead. This is also um, at a time. Whereas we really look at the um, price trend here, we're still ranging here on what would be support if we inverse this chart like this, this would basically be support and we would be waiting for this thing to push higher. The first area of interest here is about roughly 52 to about 50%. And then from there, we really kind of just target the 45 to almost 40% level. So this thing has a lot of downside potential, which is only going to push all coins significantly higher which is telling us, hey, alt season is still coming. And even over here on in terms of uh, Ethereum dominance, yeah, this thing might sell off a little bit more down to about roughly almost 16.86 or so percent. Again, supporting Bitcoin to run up a little bit more once we start to see Bitcoin break its all-time high. 
And then from there, we really kind of watch for this thing to break out in a very, very large way. I mean, this thing looks like, you know, a, a massive, you know, bull flag almost on the, uh, on this view, but it, it just looks ready to pump to the upside once we do run these uh, lows down here, which by the way, this is also telling us like Ethereum might sell off once we have that Ethereum ETF launch, just like the Bitcoin ETF launch. But I would just be, you know, a little bit cautious here. Don't get overly bullish yet uh, because we're not out of the water. We need to clear that recent high before we even get a little bit excited from here on out. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely have a like, subscribe, so notifications on because more free content. You guys are more than follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. And with that being said, guys, it's been Nick. Thanks for watching. Peace out.